and it was on this day june 4th 2021 i remember what month it was that i finished the codex solera with the book first lord's fury i've completed the series um i just i've been reading since i woke up like about five minutes after i woke up i picked up the book and i've been reading since then uh, I read 25% of the book since this morning. It is, right now, it's 1 o'clock uh, p.m. So, Ooh. uh, this is, I'm not likening the two, okay? I want to say that beforehand, but this book is kind of like when I first read Well of Ascension and that so much happened that I can't even recall everything that happened in this book at the moment. Like, I, I'm i trying to remember what the like this part of the book had in it. Because there's just so much going on. Um, I, I'm trying to remember what happened in Princess Fury and what happened in this. I think... This book started there. I I think I got it, maybe. I don't know. I the spoiler section of this video is just gonna be a blur. And I'm not even gonna talk a lot because again, I don't I don't know what to talk about. Um The series overall was really good. It was fun, very military packed. I did not expect that going in, though I probably should have because they're Romans, but um, very military packed. I loved the world building. The world building was great. Uh, I have an I told you so later. That's going to be really fun to do. It was a half told you so. Just saying. Um, yeah. It is a perfect mashup of Roman legions and Pokemon. He nailed it. Nailed it. Oh, it was great. It's great. Um, this isn't necessarily a spoiler, but it has to do with like what I expected of Butcher. Uh, in the Dresden Files, Butcher's maybe a little bit lenient on character deaths. Like maybe you'll have thought a character died multiple times and then they'll be fine. He's very forgiving like that. In this series, I seriously thought he killed a lot of characters. But I think in the end, he's still a forgiving author. Um, other authors probably would have just been like, boom, they're dead. I think Butcher in, is very lenient on that. So, yeah. Now that I've finished two series, I feel like I could say that out of... I mean, they're not completed series, so... Yeah. But that's something I noticed. It's not really a flaw. Though I think it would be interesting if more people died. Um, just saying, but it wasn't bad, you know, there's other series I've read where it stands out that it's like impossible to kill any character. This isn't bad. So it works. That's what I'm saying. I did not plan this ahead of time. I started this video as soon as I finished the book, by the way, there was no time in between. I wiped a single tear from my eye. I didn't actually, but I was like, start video. Yep. Oh, that's good. Um, favorite character. We'll do, we'll do this. My favorites. My favorite character. It's probably Kitai. I really like Kitai. I love her. I adore her. Um, I really, really, really liked Marcus. And people who've read the series, they know. They know what I'm talking about. But people who haven't just know that I like Marcus. Um, I really like Sextus, but, you know, I can't say he's my favorite. Like, that is not a thing. Um, I also really liked, this is kind of spoilery. Just the name. The name itself is spoilery. Bleep. 
I really liked Alara, um, the character. And now I get people are like, wait a second, Codex Alara? Alara? But Alara, the character, is also a really good character. Bleep. End of spoiler. Um, it's not really much of a spoiler, but people might be like, conclusions. I can see people drawing those lines quickly. But I really liked Alara. She wasn't on page a lot, but she's also very interesting. <sighs> of course, the main character. He's a main character I love. There's some main characters I don't like. This is a main character that's just like, my man. I like this guy. <laughs> Funny insanely brave, insanely intelligent. I love it when the main character's smart. There's a lot of times where characters may do something stupid. Amara. I'm not sorry. Um, where characters will do something stupid and maybe it's like frustrating to some readers. Definitely not all readers, but I'm a reader who can get frustrated at characters if they're being a, a little bit stupid. If they're missing like something obvious, or doing something completely idiotic. And I don't mean idiotic in like the you are a madman kind of way. I mean like idiotic in like you have no reason to be doing this. There's only risks. There's, there's no benefit to doing this. You should not be doing this. My greatest example is Vin. I think Vin had a lot of moments where she just was not. Vin is from Mistborn. Uh, where she was just being stupid. She's just not being smart at all. There was no reason she should have been doing what she was doing. And she was anyway. And she is a teenager, so you could make that argument. But, yeah. Tavi was not that. Tavi was the character who was, like, super smart. He had all these reveals that you're like, damn it, I didn't see that. But he's smart. Um, there were a few times where I was, like, where there's I saw a possibility... This was like only like twice in the whole series. Uh, I saw a possibility that the characters could have done to like help them in that moment and then it wouldn't happen. Which is fine. Um, but it would have been smart. But that only happened like twice out of like the 50 or so ones that Butcher found. He had a lot of very unique solutions to problems and I really like those. Um, I'm going to bring up one of the dreaded things that I'm pretty sure authors, like, despise. Um, were there any plot holes? I think there might have been one, or I'm just stupid. I don't know which it is. It's either, like, the blatant obvious, or Kitai explained it and I just didn't understand it, or I'm, I'm just stupid. I don't know which it is. It might just be the blatant obvious, like the obvious solution, but that doesn't really give the why, <laughs> you know? It's like, there's no why. I guess I, I can kind of see it. No, I don't see it because I'll get into it in the spoiler section. I... I can get it, but I think that isn't a good reason. We'll get there. All right. Anything else? Furies are really cool. I'll get to the I told you so later, which is really cool. Uh, oh, the different races. Um, the Kanem, the Iceman, and the Mara. Um, I did not think, I did not know that there were like other races going into this series. I had no idea. I thought it was going to be like Romans fighting other Romans, or, like, internal conflict galore. Um, but no, there's Mara, and there's Kanem, and then there's Iceman. I think all three, all three of the, like, stages of interactions with each of those clans and groups was really fun. I liked all of them. I can't think of a moment I didn't like in any of the three. Like, any time we interacted with the Mara, any time we interacted with the Iceman, any time we interacted with the... Canem. I can't think of a time I wasn't enjoying it. Like that, all three of those arcs were fun. Really good, entertaining. And they all like linked to the main plot and all that, but 
they're all really good. Um, I kind of wish I knew more. There's just so many unknowns. Every series you read, there's like, damn it, I want to know more about this world. These, those three categories are a lot of what I want to know. Um, I did notice after I finished the book, when they were talking about the name that gets revealed at the very end of the book, there's a name that they write. When I read that name, I was like, wait a second, that's a real name. And I Googled it and there's a bunch of the, a bunch of the names of the series, like Aquitaine are like Roman, famous Roman names that you could go Google and do research on. Really cool nerd stuff. People, things that people can nerd about. Um... Always enjoy that. I talked about Marcus. I don't know. I really, I, I, I don't know. Um, do, do, do. We talked about them. The High Lords. A lot of fighting. I'm trying to think of, honestly, I don't know if this book is the most epic fight moment. Oh, I was going to do that earlier. Oops. Uh, I don't know if this book has the most epic fight moment or not. I gotta say, Princeps Fury and Cursor's Fury. Cursor's? I think those captains. Those are captains? Oh no. They're all bleeding together. Um. It was one of those. It wasn't Academs. It was after Academs. Um, those books were pretty damn epic with their fighting. Not that this fighting wasn't epic, but I think this fighting was on such a grand scale that you need, like, a, a theater-sized TV screen to, like, convey what is going on. Um, it's like Lord of the Rings, where it's just, like, there's this freaking huge, massive battle... And you have to, like, hold the image in your head for a long period of time. Actually, Lord of the Rings has, like, shorter. Uh, for a long period of time. It's hard to, like, to truly take in what is happening. Um, but some of those smaller fights, like, there was one in here. And that happened over there. It, it like, solidifies more. You're not, like, imagining this, like grand scale like mil like literal millions of people fighting but instead you have this like four people fighting but it's epic fighting you know so that's something i would note about this book and how it compares to the others segue favorite book that is hard um i really if i recall correctly i think captain's fury was my favorite before now unless it was princeps Hold on. Which is whichever one I gave a five star rating on good readings. On good reads. Um, basically, I keep track of my favorite. Oh, I'm finished with this book. Um, I keep track of my favorite book by marking it with a five. Let's see. I don't know what this book is yet, so don't ask me yet. I'm thinking about it while I'm searching this. <laughs> It is, uh-oh, which one is it? Oh, it was Princeps. All right, Princeps was the one I gave five stars. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is, it is Princeps. It is Princeps. God, that's so good. <laughs> Captains was also pretty good, though. And Cursors. The reveals and Cursors. Captains... Cursors, like, ended the book with, like, reveals galore. And then Captains was, like, revealing upon the reveals. I don't know if that makes any sense. But Captains, like, built on it and then also had this, like, epicness on some epic scales. There, there was a lot going on. And it had a ship journey! It had a ship journey! I... It's my first ever fantasy. Fantasy is the key word here. I've read a lot of lot. I've read a lot of not fantasy ones, but it was my first fantasy ship journey, and I was like, this is awesome. So, Captain Fury had the ship journey. It was great. Mm. And then Princess Fury also was damn good. They're really all good. Um, I, Cursors Beyond, they're all good. I'm not saying that Academics and Furies of Calderon weren't good. 
Um, but I'm saying that they had me hook, line, and sinker. I I would not have put down the series after cursors. That would, it would not have happened. Um, it's impossible. Yeah. I don't know. Cur cursors, it, it's just damn good. So good. Um, would I reread the first book? Yes. I think it'd be interesting to reread the first book now that you know who everyone is because you don't really know that first and you don't really know the context of the world at first but after knowing like oh this is what this world is like when you start off the series you really you only know this tiny section of this huge map you you know this this is all you know is this you don't know what life is like out here. You don't even know if there's other biomes or if everything looks like what it's like over here. No idea that there's Candom. No idea that there's Iceman, you know? So it'd be interesting to go back to the first book and know stuff. So I will do a reread. Not now, but one day. And we'll see how that's different. I don't think I could put this above Princess. It's not that I could put it below Princess. It's that I don't think I could put it above. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm not saying this is worse. I'm saying that Princess is just better. <laughs> Have a positive view on it. Um, this is a lot thicker. And there's a lot more to take in in this one. And I, I think that's part of why. There's just so much going on. And there's a lot of travel. I mean, it's like fighting, 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 travel scene. Tiny conversation. Fighting, fighting, fighting. Most of the book is fighting. So, I think Prince of Fury had more of those, like, nuances and stuff. And I think that's why I think it just turned out better. But, again, this book was also damn good. It was really good. It's like a sticky bit on my cover. It's gonna annoy me. Um, so I'm gonna put a sticker. Stickers on books, the bane of readers' existences. Well, people who do actual books and not audio books. Man, man. I'm joking. I totally don't care about <laughs> what people audio book at all. Man. This is really good. All right. I don't really know what else I could get into other than just diving into spoilers. So, spoilers. <sighs> okay, let's start with the I told you so. I told you so Gyarados would be claimed. I mean, Gyarados wasn't fully claimed, but back when I read Furious of Cauldron, I was like, I bet that when Tavi has his Fury powers, he's going to get like Gyarados or something. That's not exactly what happened. But, Tavi was, like, messing around with the claim of Gyarados, and I was like, <laughs> he didn't claim Gyarados, but he was messing with it. I wasn't wrong in the sense that Gyarados didn't just fade from the story entirely. He came back, and he came back big. That was epic. The, the whole Gyarados thing, I was, like, imagining, like, the beginning of God of War. Is that God of War 3? No. Maybe. I imagine like the beginning of God of War where you're climbing on all the titans. I was thinking like that, but like the big mountain was the titan. You have to play the game to get it. Um, and maybe even you don't. But that was all epic and crazy. So, Gyarados, Thana, Thana, I don't know how to say that name. I can Google how to say the names now. Okay. While we're talking, um... Athena. Oh, I think I said this right. Haha! <laughs> My sound's off, sorry. Aqua Jean. Um. <laughs> yeah, that was hella interesting. Marcus was revealed. I've waited for Marcus to be revealed for so long. So long. And. Marcus was revealed in this. I thought Tavi knew. Tavi did not know, it turns out. Um, that kind of blew my mind. But Tavi did not know. But I kind of like how Tavi went about it after he got over his, like, 
anger. Um, so it was very interesting. How how old is Tabby at the end of the series? I, I have no idea. Um, I'll Google it later. So, I really like Marcus. His entire arc, even in the beginning, which at first I didn't understand, and it confused me, and I thought that he was being foolish for a smart cursor. But now that I kind of have the whole picture, I think it's really good. I think it, it you just don't see it all at first. I think there's some people who might not agree there, but that's my perspective, is that all of his actions of Furious of Calderon, I think all of those are exempt even now. Um, I think there's some characters to go to do the opposite of what I'm saying for Marcus. There's some characters that just never clicked for me. Odiana just never clicked. I mean, we know her story. We know the whys. We know, like, who she is. But she's just always just background there. I guess she had a role in... Cursors? Question mark? Yeah. I, I She had a role in Cursors. Um, but... I don't know. She was always just a background character who was eh. Max and Crassus were both... How do you say that one? They were both very useful and important characters. Crassus. Crassus. Okay. Max and Crassus were both, like, very useful characters, important characters, but I never really, you know, fell in love with them. One of them could have died, and I would not have cared. I mean, okay, cared is the wrong word, but I would not have minded. I wouldn't have, like, taken my anger out of Butcher, like, if Karen Murphy died. Um... You know, it's like, this is my character. You cannot touch this character. Kitai. Kitai was like that. It was like, if you kill Kitai, I'm going to be mad at you, Butcher. You know, you pick the one or maybe two characters that you're like, you can't kill this character, author, because I say so. And then the author does whatever they want anyway. Um, I did not do that for those two characters. I didn't really mind if that happened to those two characters. They were basically, I don't know if any of y'all know my opinions on Dresden, but for Dresden Files... If you've read it, Thomas is my max. I never really cared about Thomas. If Thomas died, I would not have minded. A lot of fans disagree with me, and I know it. A lot of fans are like, <gasps> like gasps, and I can feel their anger. But Thomas, I would not have cared if Thomas died, like, early in the series. I mean, you know, after he became a significant character, but earlier. Um, would not have cared. Crassus and Max are like the Thomas of Alex Al Alex Alera? Help me. I was thinking of Alex Varus for a second there. Codex Alera. Um, so, I don't know. They don't really stick with me. They're important characters, though, and they're interesting. And there's some funny moments. Um, I really like um, Stakes and New Shoes. Those were really funny. Stakes and New Shoes. I think those were the names, but Butcher was really good at bringing up something from a previous book and making it still be funny, including in, like, the third to last page of First Lord. It was referenced, like, Academ's Fury, and I remembered it. So he was really good at that. Stakes and Two Shoes, or New Shoes. Two Shoes is a song. Stakes and New Shoes were examples of that, where they got brought up back in... Uh, it, was, it was Captains or Princeps. I think it was Princeps. They were brought up back in Princeps. But they just kept returning over and over again. It's kind of funny. Um, and then the joke in this one was about like how stupid the First Lord song is. They were talking about like how horrendous it is. And they were still playing it at the end of the book. That was funny. It's those like subtle details. I really, really like them. Um, just, it's weird. It's such, like, a action-filled military. I already said military, but it's such, like, an action-filled military sort of base book, or just war-based book, if you could just say war, that the, the comedy's subtle, I think. It's not, like, the comedy of Dresden, where it's, like, clear, obvious, you're, this character is always joking around kind of thing. Let's be honest, Harry is always joking around. But this series instead 
it's like individual characters. Sometimes it's like a main character, like Kitai. Kitai tends to be pretty funny, but she's serious a lot of the time too. She just brings a lot of the comedy. There's a lot of characters that make a lot of jokes to kind of like break up their own despair and struggles, which also happen to break up the reader who's like reading like death, 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 war, 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 fight, fight. And it's really well done. So yeah, I just, I could not tell you how many times I laughed, but there's a lot of things that I like giggled, chuckled, laughed. Um, so those are all really good. Sextus was one of those characters where he could get me to laugh quite a bit. I don't know why, I could not explain why, but something about his, like, slyness, I always was, like, I was always enjoying that. But there's a bunch of jokes. There's some really good insults and stuff. Yep, and there's some freak out moments. It's <sighs> good. It's really good. I need to stop stabbing my book with my bookmark. Also, like, can we just say that the last word of the book is alarins? With, like, and, look, the last word of the book is alarins, but let's give some context. She's, like, eye-rolling as she's saying that she's, like, alarins. And the name of this book is, you know, it's Codex Alara. She's just, like, oh, fucking alarins. End of book. <laughs> this is, this, that's great. To end it with her... With Kitai is just like <sighs> fucking Alarins. I think that's amazing. I apologize for the cursing, but I think that better conveys her like attitude. <sighs> really funny. Um, side note that kind of doesn't really matter, but this is I think this is the first time I've ever read a wedding on page ever in any book. And I know that's crazy. You would think that I've like read one by now. I mean like technically I read one in Journeyer but like it wasn't like the wedding ceremony itself. It was like the afterward in which you're like I don't really want to talk about it because some crazy things happened <laughs> in that scene. Um, but Journeyer does not pull punches when it comes to the stuff. Um, not really. It was not really. And also, I'm pretty sure divorce happened at the end of the scene. Basically, it basically was like, oh, this is all null because the family said no. Basically. Um, it's heptic. Okay, that's all you need to know. I can't tell you anything else on that shelf at the wedding. I can tell you that Brave New World does not. Cast 22 did not have a wedding. Um, there's a lot of times where the wedding was off page. I think. I don't, I don't want to give like spoilers to that series. Um, I read A Thousand Splendid Sons. And the wedding for that was off page both times. It was like, we're now wed. And that was it. It just never really happened kind of thing. Just off screen. And that happened in some of those series too. But I've never read it on page. So it's interesting to have like, boom, wedding. And then also like insult like the process to having a wedding. Because let's be honest... Well, okay, maybe not let's be honest, but I'll be honest, I do think the wedding process, depending on what you do, is a bit absurd and over the top and maybe kind of a ruse. I not in the way that word is meant to be used, but the image of you have to be like the princess of the day. I don't like that. I'm really uncomfortable with that kind of thinking that we have, it's like, you have to spend all this money to like look like the perfect princess kind of thing. It's like this image that we have like set into our minds since we were kids, and so we can't really like get rid of the image, but it's not really like one we put there, it's like one we're expected to do. I don't know, I have my opinions. I'm horrible at wording my opinions if you have not realized that. Um, 
I know people who have the same opinion as me. They're just good at explaining it, unlike me. So, anyway, I love that they kind of make fun of that. And they also make fun of the fact, wait, you just sign a piece of paper? It's like, yeah, just sign a piece of paper. That's, you know, basically. You sign a piece of paper, drink champagne, have people tell stupid stories about you. Boom. That was your entire wedding. I'll be honest, I went to a lot of weddings as a kid because I have, I was born early, not all that early, but I was the first like child of my generation for the most part. So I got to experience like my aunt's weddings and stuff like that uh, as like a kid. And I think the one thing that has ever stuck in my mind with any wedding I've ever been to is free food. That is it. It's the only thing I cared about at all of those is like there's once where they like catered Chick-fil-A and I just got infinite Chick-fil-A for free and that is what I remember is eating Chick-fil-A so I think that says something about me maybe it was delicious though it was well cooked at the time back when Chick-fil-A was good <laughs> get insulted um man I'm tired I saw a Okay, we'll talk about Isana really quick. Um, I can see why I've heard this as a rumor. I don't actually know this. There's a rumor that a lot of people don't like Isana's storyline. And I can see why. I, I like Isana in the end. I think, like, Kurtzer's Fury onward Isana, and I mean from the beginning of Kurtzer's Fury onward Isana, is amazing. Isana in Fury's of Cauldron was, like, Damn, she just flooded that river, which is also really nice. I saw in, in Academic Fury, I was just like, what's happening here? It's weird because your first impression of her is that she's like, M like, get away from my son, flood a river. Um, and she also like saved her, like she's very like defensive, I guess, to people she loves, which makes sense. And she's also like having all these internal struggles which kind of makes sense and then academic fury she's like i'll join up with aquitaine because i need to defend myself and also this cursor is defending me i don't know i think academic fury it was kind of weird and muddled and i was kind of confused also Averis. Averis, i was always muddled and confused with fade back when he was fade for a good while. Cursor's Fury, it was kind of getting better, but not really. Captain's Fury when it was when it was like okay, I'm accepting this now. I'm still not overly happy with it. I kind of wish that Butcher also took the time to explain how he did the metal crafting. Like how someone could do that. Um, I don't understand how causeways work at all. Like, I know that they travel faster on a causeway. Okay, but what do they do to travel faster on a causeway? I never really understood that. There's some of the things... What was that? There's some of the things I don't, like, exactly understand as well. So, yeah. But I'm not overly happy with Auraris either. I think I'd put Auraris below Max and Crassus. Um, just was not... Did not care. Um, Amara was getting better throughout the series. I don't think she was, like, amazing. Bernard was amazing, and I love Bernard. He's freaking awesome, and I love him. Seriously. Like, he's great. I, I don't really have anything else to say. It's like, I freaking love Bernard. End of story. That The last time he used the bow in the series, he's just like, alright, bow as tall as I am. All of his strength, and then, like, all of his strength was badass i love i love them i really do um i think that covers like a lot of people never really cared for magnus like at all even a little erin erin is also very interesting because his like subtle betrayal he grew a lot like erin back in in um academic i was like eh but, like, Aaron, like, later on, I was like, oh. And then he, like, he just kept getting better and better and better. So Aaron, by the end of this, is really, really good. So I really like Aaron, too. He's a fun character. A bit of a literalist. 
And I think having a, like, literalist point of view, he's not quite a pessimist, but he's not an optimist. He's like, he, he, he's like, all right, there's five massive creatures that we don't know how to deal with coming at us. We're screwed. He's like, he's very, like, literal, like, oh, this is a great situation. All these people dying? It's like, yes, it is a great situation. Here's why. You know, he's just, he's that person. I don't know if that makes any sense, but he was very fun. I think it was interesting throughout the series that all these names that you heard once, like, from way earlier on, would pop up. And it's like, oh, that's the guy you saw in Academus Fury, and now he's a slave fighting for the enemy. I didn't really, like, care most of those times, you know? It's like... Hey, look, that one bully from Akinem's Fury is now dead. Okay. Um, there was a lot of that, and it just didn't really stick with me. I couldn't tell you who all it was, but yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the higher figures are more what stuck out to me. All the high lords and the high ladies, all badass and awesome and really cool. I really loved them. So those were all cool. And all their times that they were just like, lightning! Or something like that. It's really cool. I side comment that's on topic. I loved how Butcher progressed the arc in which you learned how much the Furies can do. Like you start with like Tavi and like flooding the river, and then you like I don't really have the example for Agnes Fury, but there's something in there. And then like Cursor's Fury, you get like boom volcano, and then Captain's Fury, you get like Leviathan things and like cra this stuff happening okay crazy things happening and then like I suck at this but the point is is that you keep learning more and more you see Gaius, Sextus and like the high lords and the high ladies do stuff starting at a certain point and then it progresses which ones do what at one point you see Aquitaine like pretending so let's pretend like he wasn't pretending we see Aquitaine, like, getting these, like, great furies, right? You know, just, like, that subtlety. We never really got to see someone claim a fury. Like, for real. We never saw, like, the real deal. And Tavi never did. <sighs> I kind of wanted him to. Um, but the way he did that in, like, a, a build-up kind of thing. You saw more and more and more and more power until it was like this, hey look, Gyarados is moving kind of thing. It was really cool. Um, also a Lyra. So, yep. Uh, Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm running out. I'm running out. Um, <laughs> talked about most characters. Is that, is that, is that? <laughs> I don't know why I dislike Amara. <laughs> I could not explain why. There's just maybe her attitude or something. She has great moments. There's just times where I was just like, <sighs> sigh. I don't know why. I guess she reminded me a little bit of Vin. Maybe. That might not even be it. So I don't know, but definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's so many epic moments funny moments. Remember when Tavi got struck by lightning? That was... <sighs> I can reminisce over the last few books for a long time now. Be like, remember that time that the First Lord was like, fuck you, Vord, and then boom, volcano. That's not how it went down. It went down even more epic than that. It was like, Oh, <laughs> it, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, goodness. Anytime we talk about, like, his, him being badass, I, like, freak out. Um, what's the name of the guy on the Northern Wall? Was it Rockus or someone else? I don't remember. There's a lot of High Lords. Um, but whoever was, like, fighting against the Iceman and he was just, like, how dare you? And, like, lightninged down. That was awesome. And then also this, the fight in this with like the red and blue versus like the amethyst which is Kitai and then like the green like all fighting in the storm cloud really cool and the massive wind mane like going like <sighs> so good. 
there's just so many moments to talk about. Also, the moment where I realized that Marcus was Finn Elias, I just flipped. I, I flipped. That was back in Kirk's Dispiry at the very end. Gaius Sextus meets up with traitor Finn Elias, and they just have a normal conversation as if everything's normal. It's like, wait, Marcus is Finn Elias? Wait, why are you meeting with the enemy? What? And, oh, it was good. This is good times. I, I flipped out a bit. And then ever since that moment, of course, I've been obsessed with Marcus. So, uh, it's fun. It's really fun. I don't really know what else to talk about. I bet Kitai's kid's adorable. Also, I'm glad that, like, it went well. <laughs> there was, like, this, like, subtle underplot of, hey, it's possible that this child might not be born kind of thing. Because they're like different races and stuff, but it ended up being fine anyway. But huh. what was that plot hole? Ah, I remember. All right, this might be the last thing I say because I need to stop at one point. But that plot hole is the board not attacking Kitai and Tavi earlier in the series, but later in the series they did without distinction. I was wondering. Maybe it's because the Vord Queen was considering them as, like, the mother and father, so the Vord Queen wouldn't attack them. But then, the Vord Queen did attack Tavi anyway. And so, if it's the Vord Queen that controls them, and the Vord Queen didn't want to attack them, but then, if, if, if like, Tavi came close, then the Vord Queen would attack him, it doesn't really make sense. I remember Kitai mentioned it twice in this book. She mentioned it... Bef like back before the board queen came to attack the camp by the way that caught me entirely off guard she mentioned it like a few chapters before that and it was like why and they were like we'll figure it out in the next few days and i don't know if they ever did figure it out um maybe i just missed it but i don't think they ever figured out why they didn't attack them maybe they did maybe they didn't I will say that Asana's... Okay, I was talking about how much I did like Asana in the end. Asana's role just sitting in the hive was less interesting. I think that was kind of like... She's just sitting there. Great. Cool. <laughs> so I will say that. I'm surprised NVIDIA didn't like... Break earlier, you know? I don't know, the conflict between Isada and NVIDIA was kind of, like, pretty rocky a lot of the time, so I will say that. Um, man, I had one more thing I was going to say before I stopped. Oh, I liked how the board developed, too. Um, how they kind of, like, experimented with people to see how they act. Or, I guess the queen was the one who did that, but, like, the queen was, like, trying to learn humans... And she kind of, like, joined the Merat perspective that Alarans are cuckoo. <laughs> uh, God, what was the word? There was a specific word they always used. It was... I don't know. Absurd, crazy, you know. Um, so, I think that was also very interesting. I don't have anything else to say. I'm just going to, like, simmer on the series for a while. And, yep. <laughs> That's all I really have to do now. I don't think there's any short stories for Codex Alera. Butcher talk, like, people ask Butcher. I, these are, like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, one second. I'm getting this from watching Dresden panels. I've watched panels about Dresden, and then occasionally it'd be mentioned, like, a fan would be like, are you returning to Codex Alera? And he'd be like, I have points where I can, but not yet. Kind of makes sense. Um, I don't think there's any short stories. I'll search it, but I don't think so. So, I can basically just simmer in it and go to the next book. Segue. The next book I'm reading is Hero of Ages. I'm going to finish that Mistborn Era one. I don't know if I'm ready. 
I might need a break from this because I'm, I'm, this was like fighting, fighting, fighting. I'm worried that Hero of Ages is also fighting, fighting, fighting. Like, well, the session had like the politics and then the fighting. I'm worried that Hero of Ages is like fast paced. I don't actually know that. I haven't read it. But with how it left off, I'm worried that that's what's going to happen. And I don't want to get like... I had the word and it left right as I was talking. I don't want to start reading and I just hit a wall because I've gotten tired out from that. So that's my worry, but we're going to start it pretty soon and we'll see how far it goes. After that, I'm going to read some Journeyer. If I start reading Hero of Ages and it's not looking so good, then I'll maybe read like half of a chapter of Journeyer and then go back and see if that makes a difference. When I finish Hero of Ages, I'm going to read a chapter, maybe two, of Journeyer. And then after that, segue. Uh, I have, I don't know if y'all can tell, but I redid my bookshelf. I need to move my camera so I can see my own bookshelf. There we go. I redid my bookshelf. So here's the tour. This is still the butcher shelf, but it has two exceptions. Actually, it has three exceptions. I have Dune over there, Dracula's up there, and Cast 22 is above... Aeronauts win less. Um, we have over here some books that you guys didn't know I owned because I didn't put them on my bookshelf. Um, I have Ego is the Enemy, The Word is Murder, Red Rising, Golden Sun. Yes, I have the Red Rising series. I just didn't put them on my bookshelf. Red Rising, Golden Sun, um, the Powder Mage trilogy, and then the Gods of Blood and Powder trilogy, and then Faithful and the Fallen is vertical, and then Malazan is like stacked in these four above it. And then Leviathan Wakes is there, House of Suns is above it, and the Journeyer is above House of Suns. Um, we have Cosmere, Mistborn, Sun Eater, Farseer Trilogy, Great Coats series, and then Tom Clancy, Blade Runner, and um, my astrophysics book. So, my new tour, but I now have this series completed right here. This book does not match the other two, you can maybe tell from here. It irritates the hell out of me, it's actually shorter by like that much, so this is a little gap. It's annoying. Um, so, yeah. But I now own those books, and now I've reorganized my shelf. Oh, I'm, I forgot a book. I own Midnight Riot, right there, by Ben Aronovich. It's very hard to see, but it's up there. I have the first book of Rivers of London, is the essence. I got one more Kindle book. I can't see my own camera, sorry, hold on. These are my problems. I got one more Kindle book. It is a book that just came out like a few, a week and a bit ago now. It's called, this is hard, The Black Tongue Thief. It's by Christopher Buellman. This is a new author, a de debut author, there we go, um, just posted. I believe this is like his first book he's ever published. Um, it's apparently grimdarky. It has reviews from Robin Hobb, Glenn Cook, and Brent Weeks already. So I think it's grimdark fantasy. It apparently has an interesting magic system. So I went ahead and bought it because it was on sale. Um, on a whim. I mostly just bought it on a whim. Don't know when I'll get to it ever, but I now own it. So yeah. Um, after reading Codex Alera, I'm not in a grimdark mood. Um, so I think we'll come back to that. Uh, I talked about maybe reading The Blade itself. Not yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna recede a bit from that line. Not that Codex Alera is grimdark. It's just military, military. Okay, that's not what all of Codex Alera is, but there is a lot of fighting. And also I've watched a lot of military dark grim dark movies recently that's what i should say i've been watching grim dark movies so not really in the mood at the moment but soon we'll we'll it'll come back um i don't think there's anything else 
So yeah. Goodbye. I don't have anything else. Good day.